Instagram, can you hear me? Is it good? If you can hear me right now, put in the comments what you got going on today for Monday. Happy Monday to everybody. Let me know what you guys have going on right now in your world. Over here in Arizona, it's been really busy, actually. Um, met with different providers today and for uh, clinical research. So I have a study from my new clinic here in Arizona. And I was wanting to, is this thing not plugged in? Let me make sure. I don't see, I don't see if this thing is plugged in. Looks like it is. Let's see, bear with me guys. Happy Monday, happy Monday. Okay, so looks like it is. Something's going on with my wires. Don't want to run out of power here. Okay. Hopefully it works. So yeah, I got a new clinic. Hey, how's it going, SS? I got a new clinic here in Yuma. So, uh, one of the things I've noticed about these new these cities where there's no research is underserved. They are underserved cities. They're not necessarily small. I mean, they're on the smaller side, but they're not necessarily small clinics. Um, is that there's the medical groups, there's a few medical groups that control everything. Gazelle, I got good news for you, Gazelle, over there on LinkedIn. Let me let me pull you up here. Gazelle, I uh, found an ophthalmologist. This is what I'm telling everybody live. But I found an ophthalmologist here in Yuma who wants to do studies. He's been... He's been a physician for like 50 years uh, and he's got tons of patients and all the equipment and he's never done research, but he's about to be a sub I for one of my studies. So by the time we do PI work with him, he's going to have research experience. Uh, so I, I've been meaning to talk to you, Gazelle. I got that good news. I immediately thought of you, former CRA Academy graduate, now an, an ophthalmology um now an ophthalmology uh, monitor. So shout out to Gazelle. Mahalo. You're, you could go think about this, Gazelle. You can go from beautiful Hawaii, all right, to lovely Yuma, Arizona, where it's about 105 degrees right now. Can't turn that down. You can't turn that down. So tomorrow I'm meeting with uh, this, P, this potential PI ophthalmologist. But I got this study. Uh, and it requires like two sub eyes, requires a derm and an ophthalmologist. And I've just been going all over town trying to talk to doctors. I have one PI on board. He's family medicine. So we have that. We can do most of the studies with him. But there, all the studies that require specialists, I have to go find specialists. And it's really hard to get a specialist in an underserved place like this because they get bought up by the big groups. So there's a few big groups here. There's there's statewide groups, and then there's in t locally in town, there's the hospital. And so, you know, it's it's no different than it was when I was back in Anaheim. And Christine Naro, shout out to Christine Naro. Yes, we just went live last week with Christine Naro. We we're talking about career, career, how to build your career in clinical research. Um, so, so I'm going to be vlogging a lot about my experiences here. Uh, I feel like the opportunities are great, uh, especially like it follows my theory, small is the new big. I'm not just talking about companies, right? I'm talking about geographic cities. So I got asked the question, would like to know if the CRA Academy is 100% monitoring CRA internship. The answer is yes. We do have people that come in um, to do physical monitoring we haven't had this happen since covid so we actually we have not had in-person internship at the cra academy since covid it's all remotely what up instagram how's it going guys put the hearts smash the hearts let me know that you're here let's know that the algorithms it lets the algorithms know that we're winning okay it lets the algorithms know that small is the new big 
small channel, small channel, but big noise. We're making big noise, big moves, put the likes, put whatever you want. The robot comments, robot emoji is a good comment if you have nothing else to say. So yeah, small is the new big. So definitely follow me for the, I'm documenting my journey as a new site owner in a small town, small town, big ambitions. Uh, got a, another question today from somebody, a lot of career stuff guys. So if you, I've noticed on LinkedIn, there's a lot of these kind of positions, study startup specialist. There are positions, um, clinical trial assistant. Uh, I got a question today from somebody who is asking a question along these lines. Uh, a lot of people wanting to know how to get in CRC job CRC. Look when <laughs> CRCs are so, so much in demand. There's, there's so much opportunity in clinical research and people are saying, well, you're vague. Okay. You, you're vague when you say small is the new big. Well, think about it. Put yourself in the, position of of the site that you're going to go ask to intern what do they need they only need four things right they need patients studies community outreach look, look what i'm doing as a site owner i'm going out in the community 105 degree weather and i'm talking to gatekeepers trying to get to the doctors if i'm lucky getting to the business manager at the clinics all right talking to them about research, then basically having the same conversation. If they think it's worth the doctor's time, they tell me to come back. They make an appointment. I go with the doctor. It's generally not that difficult to get in front of the doctor, but it's not just one trip or you bring donuts or that's it. You know, it's, you got to talk to a few people before you get there. Um, optometry. There's not so many clinical trials there. That's like dental stuff. Um, they they do have trials, not a lot. Ophthalmology, yes, that's a hot area. Gazelle says she has to drive to Phoenix. So from Red from um, from San Bernardino County to Yuma is much shorter, much 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 easier drive. You're talking three three and a half hours. Christine says we need to elevate the need for opto ophthalmic techs. And ophthalmology, ophthalmology photography experience is huge. I'm going to let them know that tomorrow, Christine. I have zero, uh, I shouldn't say zero. I have very little experience with ophthalmology studies. The only experience I have is for other studies when we need these safety assessments. So it happens every now and then where you need an ophthalmologist, but Yes, better than San Francisco. Much better. Absolutely. Um, so that that's a hot area. Another hot area is GI, gastroenterology. I don't think I'll be able to pursue GI in Yuma. There's only one group, and they, they're owned by the hospital. So I stay away from like these big group settings. More trouble than they're worth. They're going to do all this work, and then um, basically they're going to try to figure out their research and cut you out of it. I don't want to deal with that, right? I'm not here for headaches. I'm here to expand my career opportunities, create career opportunities for others, uh, including physicians, ophthal ophthalmology techs, ophthalmic techs. Um, Gazelle said it helped being a nurse. Yes, it helped being a nurse. So also for the international medical graduates, there's a whole a world of opportunity for you out there. Uh, let me know um, to be a medical monitor. Somebody says on Instagram, what's the, what's the opportunities to be a medical monitor? Well, let's start with what's the requirements. The requirements are you got, you have to be an MD, a licensed MD in that state that you are going, or at least in the U S because medical monitors, they do it on a national level, but you can't just become a medical monitor with no research experience. Typically, you need investigator experience, either as a PI, preferably as a PI, but maybe sub-I experience can help also. It's not like doctors 
licensed doctors grow on trees. Like it's hard for the CROs and sponsors to find these people, but of course they prefer experience. So again, if you want to be a medical monitor, you got to be a licensed doctor in the country that you want to work in. And then it doesn't hurt to have some research experience as well as an investigator. So that's, uh, that's some other, um, that's another question I get asked a lot, actually. So thank you for asking that one. Uh, another thing I got was, oh yeah, opening a site. Okay, I got hired as a coordinator. I was put on a, I was put on a COVID study. It's really hard to get patients. So by the way, there's a lot of COVID studies right now. I'm turning them down. I don't want COVID studies. I was put in a COVID study. It's really hard to get patients. That's one of the reasons why I don't want COVID studies. Uh, it's an outpatient this study. The patients need to come to the ER for five days. Patients will be compensated for each visit. So this looks like a study that's outpatient, but it starts out as inpatient in the ER. This is tough to get because you're talking about an emergency room. So it's really this person saying it's really hard to get anyone because they're only coming for the monoclonal antibody. Do you recommend a different approach to get patients enrolled in the study? I don't recommend any different approach. I think you have to have the ER doctors on board with you. And then you've got to give them incentive. Well, why are they, you know, ER, it's busy enough being in an ER during COVID. Why are they going to think about research? You have to make it worth their while to think about research. And what that is, is obviously some kind of monetary compensation for their time. I mean, they're going to be sub-investigators, it looks like, on this study. By the time you finish paying them what is fair, there's very little profit left. This is why I don't like these COVID studies, This kind of, especially this kind of COVID study. Hopefully one of the ER doctors, you can convince them to be a business partner with you or something. But other than that, there's not much you can do. Gabriella says, uh, medical doctors, which license apply to other countries as well with licensing? Yeah, so like if you're a MD in like, let's say Mexico, it's unlikely you're going to be able to be a medical monitor in the U.S., for U.S. studies, um, it's not impossible, but it's not it's not preferred. the The CROs and the sponsors they prefer U.S. MDs uh, for U.S. sites, maybe Canadian MD for Canadian sites, European, etc. Now, can a medical monitor from Europe do you know oversee study from the U.S.? Yes, it all depends where the sponsor is from. Uh, but in general, I get these questions from people who immigrate to the U.S. from another country. They think they could be a medical monitor. You probably will not be able to be that medical monitor. You could be a study coordinator. From there, you can go on to be a CRA. You could be a project manager. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Divya, can you please share your valuable knowledge on protocol amendments and the impacts they have on corresponding ICFs? Yeah, so just like... In the human body, when reactions occur, typically a cascade of events occurs. I just interviewed John, uh, Dr. Leaf, the author of, uh, what's the book? Uh, Cellular Communication. I forget the name, but it's on my YouTube channel and on the podcast, the interview with him. Life is about cascading events. Like one enzyme causes this cascade of events to happen. It's the same thing in protocols, right? protocol amendments if if a protocol gets amended more often than not the icf will get amended especially if it's anything involving the patient which most protocol amendments do have changes that affect the patient so you have to inform the patient again with a new icf you also need new protocol training for the new version for all the staff on board those are the two big things that cascade. Another thing that probably will need to change is the source for that study. Probably needs to be amended as well, the, the source templates. So a lot of changes, a lot of important things happen during protocol amendments. 
Actually, I have an entire video on that. Um, David, shout out to David. Uh, to recruit COVID patients, you'll want to build relationships with testing centers and urgent care clinics. When you have that COVID patient recruitment is not difficult. See? Yes, I, I agree. I just think it's tough to build relationships with testing centers and urgent care clinics. But if the budgets are good enough, it's worth your while. Please describe Instagram. I need to see hearts, likes, share. Do what you got to do on there. Please describe opportunities for international medical graduates in clinical research a little more. Man, there's a lot. I mean, I think IMGs, international medical graduates, make excellent coordinators. Excellent. For I think it's obvious why. I mean, they are they're doctors. They're just not licensed in the U.S. Excellent study coordinators. Here, I'm in a border town here in Yuma, Arizona. There are lots of licensed doctors from Mexico. They happen to be licensed in Mexico that want to live and work in the U.S. And they're only they're getting like medical assistant jobs, right? Like their clinical research should be amazing to these people. The problem is most people will never have access to clinical research careers like you get. You guys are lucky. We need to raise more awareness for IMGs out there because they, they, they're they needed in research. Coordinator is just the first step. From there, you could go site director or you can go straight to CRO after that as a CRA, in-house CRA. You can be sub-investigator for studies. There's a lot with the IMGs out there, international medical graduate. Protocol amendment may be only implemented in specific countries. Please have this in mind when it relates to ICF versions and implementations. Absolutely, absolutely. Once you do like international study, it gets more complicated. The rules are not so black and white. All right, there's a little more um, in between. There's a little more color. Uh, Siraj, there was a GI study I was doing three years ago in the U.S. and the medical monitor was in Mexico. All right, so it does happen. It does happen. I just don't want, I don't want people living in the states who are IMGs to get their hopes up that you're going to be medical monitor. That's not the case, right? Unless you're involved with a sponsor on a national level and you work for, like in this case, the medical monitor was a doctor in Mexico working in Mexico. And so they let them be the medical monitor for the whole study. But that doesn't mean that every IMG who lives in the U.S. is going to be a medical monitor. That's not how it works. Uh, but it does happen. But not usually not in the U.S. Uh, greetings from Poland. Good to know that the FDA approved the Pfizer vaccine. No more emergency use. Absolutely. We knew that was coming. We knew that was coming. Um, thank you for your four-hour crash course. Four and a half, AJ. Don't cut me short, man. That thing was tough to do. That thing took me 24 hours or more to upload. To upload with bad Wi-Fi, bad bandwidth in California. There's like there's way too many people out there. Bandwidth is terrible in the in big cities. Uh fiber is gonna change that though. Uh I got placed in Nikefi after going through that video two years in now, working as a centralized monitor. Congrats, AJ. That's I love to hear that. Big time congrats. Message me if you want to be interviewed. I would love to interview you on that. I'm an IMG and want to be a site owner in a small city with two big healthcare physician groups. Any tips and tricks on finding physicians and engaging them in research? It's what I'm doing right now. It's, there's no tips and tricks. It's talking to people. Really what it boils down to, it's not any tips and tricks. You need to go have conversations. And in, in the small town, it's harder because you're going to eventually run out of providers. And those big healthcare groups are tough. I'm telling you, those big healthcare groups are tough. If you can get the main people on board... And they, but the whole group has to approve it. That's the thing. And then it depends who owns the healthcare group. Is it a corporate? Is it a corporation somewhere else in another city? Because you can forget about that. I mean, they might, they might approve it. There's a big one called Dignity Health, 
uh, we were doing something in Bakersfield with a PI. Then my PI, unbeknownst to me, sold his practice to Dignity. We were doing studies. Dignity came through and said, hey, we don't need you anymore. We're taking over these studies. And there was literally nothing I could do. I probably could have sued Dignity Health, but we just started and you need like 200 grand to sue. So, and I don't think the winning, the, the winning that lawsuit First of all, I don't think it was a given that we would have won. And number two, there wasn't enough activity for the study yet because we just got started. So we just got like two or three studies and we just started enrolling patients. So be careful with those big healthcare groups. But as far as tips and tricks and being an IMG, you can relate to the doctors. That's a good thing. You can conversate with them. Doctors like to conversate with other doctors, regardless of where you have your license. You either have to know, you either have to be a physician so you can have a conversation with them on equal playing field to some extent, or you got to know a lot about uh, research, which is my strength. That's where I come in. But I know these big groups, these big groups are tough. So just be careful. I would let, I would like learn everything you can about being a coordinator. Maybe take the CRC Academy. We have an internship in there the CRC Academy um, and then try to leverage your expertise or your newly acquired expertise. Combine that with the fact that you're an international medical graduate and have the conversations with the physicians. I really would prefer you go with this, with the independent physicians, not the big healthcare groups. But if you have, if you already have the inside track to the big healthcare groups, first of all, make sure you actually do. Don't just think that, okay, the main doctor's on board, so the group's going to be on board. That's not the case. I went to an ophthalmologist today. You guys will see later. He wants to do the study. He's on board. It's his clinic, but he sold it to this big group out of Phoenix, most likely. He sold it to them, so now he needs to ask approval for everything. And what's to say that that big corporation's going to say yes? I mean, they didn't buy his practice to do research. So they might be like, no, we want to focus on our core competencies and that's it, regardless of whether the doctor wants to do it or not. Or they can say yes and then they can figure out what you're doing and tell you, no, our relationship's ending now so that they can do it, which is what happened to me with Dignity Health. Rex Alexander says, can't stick around, but I'm here for the CRO bot revolution. <laughs> Thank you, Rex. I like that. C robot revolution. C R O bot. Thank you. Emoji, emoji, emoji. We got more emojis here from Shafak. So yeah, any more questions, guys? Let me know. It was nice, really nice to go live. Um, just know this: treat your career like a business. I don't care if you're a W two, a 1099, or you're a K one recipient which is LLC. I think it's S Corp too. I think they get K1 also. I only had two S Corps my entire career. No, no matter which form you get at the end of the year or forms, you are your career is a business. I, I think that's the most important thing here. So that means you got to do biz dev. That means you've got to constantly look for opportunities. How do you do that? You get more opportunities by having more conversations about what it is you're trying to do. So in our case, it's clinical research. You got to have more conversation about clinical research. If I want more doctors to join me in Yuma, I got to talk to more doctors about joining me in Yuma. It's simple. There's no tips or tricks. That's what you got to do. If you are a CRC and you want to be a CRA, talk to more CRAs. Talk to more project managers. Talk to more team leads. Talk to more hiring managers. If you are a CRC that wants to open a site, well, you're watching the right person, first of all. Second of all, talk to more site owners. Maybe not necessarily in the town that you want to open a clinic in. Nobody's going to want to help a competitor. But in a, you can network on LinkedIn with people across the country. So, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, treat your career as a business. 
I was hired as a CRA by a huge CRO for almost a year now in Brazil. Could you please comment if there are possibilities to work as a CRA in other countries? Yes, um, you can. So if you are at the big CRO, you can talk to them. Talk to somebody in HR or maybe your lead about where you want to immigrate to and if they have opportunities there for you. Because they'd rather keep you in the company than have you go somewhere else. This is what happened with Roberta. Uh, I interviewed her. She's a line manager. She actually is a pharmacist from Brazil, worked for a big CRO in Brazil. Her and her husband immigrated to the United States. Before they did, she talked to her company and about their planned move and they were able to get a job for her and it's a line manager job. It's not like she had to start over from the bottom. Monica network, network and network. Absolutely. Monica. That's all, all you got to do. It was the, the dinner we had was amazing dinner. You know, I just need, I discovered that I need more red wine in me. I need more red wine in me to come up with better and better and better ideas. And we got a lot going on over there too. Um, Christine says they can tune into Clubhouse with Keeping It Real and Network with Site Owners. Yes, that's tonight, Monday at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. I'm, If I remember, I'm going to be on there tonight. I, I'm going to be on there tonight because I support Marjorie and Carla from Topaz Clinical Research. They support me in hosting the Guru Nation rooms. So I'm going to support by being there and talking and listening, listening to other people on there. So yeah, keep keep uh, treating your career as a business. That's very important. And the opportunities are there. You got to network. You got to talk. You got to step outside of your comfort zone. You got to use LinkedIn. You got to. Even these comments, just networking with other people in the comments is a way to go, do networking. I mean, hey, I saw you, your comment on the live stream today. Interesting. I looked at your profile. You are, you are a in-house CRA. That is awesome. I want to be an in-house CRA. I mean, this is what you got to do, guys, over and 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 over again and figure out what it is that you are um oh let's end with this one no actually this i'm gonna do a uh separate video on this one this could be a short one we don't want to put it at the end of a 30 minute live stream uh let's see what do you think about decentralized trials conversations happening in the business it's gonna happen sponsors want decentralization of trials Sp sponsors want trials directly to patients homes I think they're going to get it on some studies where it's appropriate. I don't think it's going to change a lot of the studies because I think you're going to still need patients going to the clinics, seeing their physicians. Decentralized trial, make it more convenient for the patients because they can choose when they can go to the office and when they can stay home. I'm all for that. But it's not going to be this magic pill that solves every problem in research. The biggest problem in research is patient recruitment. Decentralized trial is not going to solve patient recruitment. Patient recruitment, the argument is that, well, we can reach more rural patients. Well, yeah, but how? How are you going to reach rural patients? I'm in a somewhat of a rural community. These patients trust their clinicians. And that's it. They barely, they barely even trust their clinicians in those rural areas because most of the providers are part of bigger systems. So what makes you think they're going to trust big pharma just because Phar pharma put out a Facebook ad for them to do a study? It's that doesn't. It's not so easy. I think once the patients are in the study, it's easier to give the patients the flexibility. Do you want to stay home for this visit? Or do you want to come in for this visit? I think that is good. I think decentralized trials are here to stay. I just don't think it's going to be this huge disruption. I think sites are going to exist. I think they're going to coexist with decentralized trials. And I think decentralized trials 
are going to just expose the awareness problem in clinical research. There's a huge lot, even after COVID, guys, clinical research was in the news every single day, every single hour, every single minute. It still is. People still don't know what clinical research is. They still don't want to do studies. You have to have these conversations with the patients and they trust their clinicians. They don't trust big pharma. They don't even trust small pharma for that matter. They trust their clinicians if you're lucky. So that's my take on decentralized trials. It's real. It's going to happen. It's not the end all be all. And let's let the automatons take over research. That ain't happening. It's going to be more human than ever in research. More, more humans are going to be needed in research than ever before right now. Facebook in the house. Good evening from Tobias Reed, PhD and Associates of New York University. Wow. Welcome. Big time. That's big time. It's an honor that you're watching. Thank you so much. So that's it. I'm going to go. I got to finish up uh, a short video. And then I got to be ready for the clubhouse. I have homework to do. I have to email all the business people that I met. I met, well, you got to watch the video, but I met, I met a lot of people and I got, they gave me homework to do to get the, to these providers. Guys, I'm not beyond it. You know, it's not beneath me. I run into gatekeepers and have to do what they want. It's just like everyone else. Bottom line. They don't know me from somebody else on the internet. They don't. I don't even mention that I do YouTube. I don't want to scare them off. The, I run a, I started a research site in town. We have protocols. Are you interested? We have assessments you can do. We pay cash. If you want to be PI, you can do that. You want to be sub I, we can do that. If you want to be not a sub I, but still be involved, we can do that too. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then finish up but thank you guys so much make sure you like subscribe comment share if you don't know what to comment put a robot emoji and i'll catch you all later bye bye